Today we'll be talking about the ISM code. Uh, ISM stands for International Safety Management Code. Uh, although ISM has been around for many years now, I think it was introduced way back in 2002, and it's been there for a number of years, uh, this video will discuss about the ISM code for those of you who are not very familiar with it, or it will help you also to answer questions in the exam or to prepare your ship for ISM audits to understand more about the requirements of the ISM and what is expected out of you from a seafarer's perspective. All right, so let's start with the code. So ISM or International Safety Management Code means that uh, the code has been designed for the safe operation of ships and for pollution prevention as adopted by the IMO or International Maritime Organization. The objectives of the code are to ensure safety at sea, prevention of human injury or loss of life, and avoidance of damage to the environment, in particularly to the marine environment and to the property. ISM was introduced after the Herald of Free Enterprise incident, which sank off the port of Zeebrugge uh, once it departed the port. Now, what happened with Herald of Free Enterprise was it, it, it capsized and it sunk, leading to the deaths of a number of people. And the main reason was that the bow door was kept open. Now, the closing of the bow doors, the responsibility of that was that of one of the crew members who was found sleeping in his cabin. And instead of closing the bow door, there was negligence in duty. Now, to prevent any kind of negligence in duty, the ISM code was designed, which basically teaches seafarers to document all their actions on board. So there are checklists associated with every operation on board so that there is no negligence. Seafarers are reminded of their essential responsibilities and there is no excuse that can be given towards negligence of duty because negligence can lead to deaths, accidents, injuries, and damage to the main environment. And that's why the International Safety Management Code was introduced. The basic structure of the ISM code is divided into two parts. Part A is the implementation part. It starts with the first chapter of definitions, where the definitions of uh, the code, what it means to be, uh, what is the company, uh, means the owner of the ship, what is the meaning of administration, safety management system, document of compliance, safety management certificate, so on and so forth. So they provide with definitions. It also provides with the objectives of the code and the requirements of this code and to what what kind of ships is the code application applicable to part one or sorry chapter one also details the functional requirements for a safety management system where it, it details what kind of a safety management system should be developed implemented and maintained by a shipping company part two talks about safety and environmental protection policy, which describes how the objectives given in part one can be achieved. Part three is company responsibilities and authority, which talks about if the entity who's responsible for the operation of the ship is other than the owner, the owner must report the full name and details of such entity to the administration or the flag state. Chapter four is designated persons. So basically to ensure the safe operation of each ship and to provide a link between the company and those on board the ship, every company needs to designate a person or persons assured having direct access to the highest level of management. And that in that regard, there is a person known as designated person assured or DPA at the company. Part five talks about master's responsibility and authority. So which the company should clearly define and document the master's responsibility with regarding to implementing the safety and environmental protection policy, motivating the crew in the observation of their policy, and so on and so forth. Part six talks about resources and personnel. So the company should ensure that the master is properly qualified, fully conversant with the company's safety management system, and given the necessary support so that the master's duties can be safely performed. There are a number of other points as well, which talks about resources and personnel and how people should be aware of their duties regarding to the ISM. Part seven talks about development of plans for shipboard operations, which include checklists for key shipboard operations concerning the safety of the ship and the prevention of pollution. Chapter eight talks about, or rather part eight talks about emergency preparedness, 
where the company should establish procedures to identify, describe and respond to potential emergency shipboard situations. Part 9 talks about reports and analysis of non-conformities, accidents and hazardous occurrences, which include procedures ensuring that the non-conformities, accidents and hazardous situations are reported to the company, investigated and analyzed with the objective of improving the safety and pollution prevention. Part 10 talks about maintenance of the ship and equipment. In that regard, the company needs to establish procedures to ensure that the ship is maintained in conformity with the provisions of the relevant rules and regulations. Part 11 talks about documentation. So basically, the company should ensure that valid documents are available at all relevant locations. Changes to the documents are reviewed and approved by authorized personnel and obsolete documents are promptly removed. In this regard, many companies require masters and chief engineers, and senior officers to be reviewing the SMS code or the ship's safety management system code and providing their feedback to the company for revisions to take place. Lastly, it's part A of implementation talks about company verification, review and evaluation, where the company is required to carry out internal safety audits to verify whether the safety and pollution prevention activities comply with the safety management system. The audits and possible corrective actions should be carried out in accordance with the procedures. Then part B of the ISM code talks about certification and verification. In this, there is certification and periodical verification where the ship should be operated by a company which has been issued with a document of compliance or with an interim document of compliance. They talks about interim certification as well because interim certification may be issued to facilitate initial implementation of the ISM code when a company has been newly established or new types of ships are being added to an existing document of compliance. Part 15 talks about verification where all verification required by the provisions of this code should be carried out in accordance with and procedures acceptable to the flag state or known as the administration. And finally, the forms of certificates where the document of compliance, the safety management certificate, the interim document of compliance and interim safety management certificate should be drawn up in a form corresponding to the models prescribed in the ISM code. In terms of certificates required for or to demonstrate compliance with the ISM code, the company and the ship shall comply with the requirements of the ism code and the ship shall be operated by a company holding a document of compliance a document of compliance shall be issued for every company complying with the requirements of the ism code and this document shall be issued by the flag state by an organization recognized by the flag state or at the request of the flag state by another contracting government a company a copy of the document of compliance shall be kept on board ship so that the master can produce it on request for verification a safety management certificate on the other hand shall be issued to every ship by the flag state or an organization recognized by the flag state and the original copy of the safety management certificate is put up in the on the ship it's demonstrated on the ship and a copy is kept in the company for verification the keys to the ism code are the auditing process the language of the documented procedures the duties of the designated persons simplicity and correction of the documented procedures the reporting process, onboard training, and compliance with all regulations and maritime codes. If I need to explain this simply, then you must understand from a seafarer's perspective, it is very important that you do what the ISM code says, and then you document whatever you do. So every action should be documented, no matter how insignificant you feel it is on the ship. So whether it's starting regular work, or carrying out special procedures such as entering enclosed spaces or confined spaces or working aloft, all these actions and procedures should be documented. The language of the code or the language of the safety management system found on the ship should be simple enough for the crew to understand and follow. All crew members should be very familiar with their duties as described in the safety management system. It should be very easy to correct and revise the ism code or the safety management system not the ism code but the safety management system of the ship if errors are found there should be some reporting processes in place for the master or the senior officers or junior officers in case they find any kind of uh, contravention with the ism policies onboard training should be not only be conducted but also be documented there are various onboard trainings that are required to be carried as per the sms or as per the ism and all need to be documented it should be ensured that all crew members are attending the training. Finally, we talk about the audit and what is inspected during an ISM audit. So if I can give it a simple explanation, 
anything can be inspected under ism audit so your whole ship comes under the ism audit because like i said before any action or any work that is being taken in on board is being carried out on board ships needs to be documented all right and that is the document is the evidence that we provide to the ism auditor to show that all actions on board are in compliance with the ism code towards the safety of persons ship cargo and the protection of the marine environment so ism audits are carried out internally by the company and then by an external auditor as well if they come on board they can not only check for ism but also your compliance with the isps which is your international security code so you must ensure that not only your safety systems firefighting systems bridge engine rooms passage plans plan maintenance schedule documentation duties are in place but overall your ship should demonstrate that actions are being taken place keeping in mind the safety and security of the ship so remember to check your documentation because that's the first check that they carry out whether it's bridge or engine room your passage plans you should be able to reproduce your passage plans if required your safety systems that is your life boat life rafts and then your firefighting systems all should be kept in good condition the seafarers or your crew ship's crew should be aware of their duties and not only aware but they should be able to perform the duties there are certain universal duties like launching of life boats life rafts starting the life boat engines uh, all this should be able or starting the emergency generators or fire pumps should be known to all crew members and that is where your training comes in and once you uh, are providing the training and you're documenting the training then tomorrow if your crew member fails to perform that at least you have the evidence to show that you have been carrying out these duties and it may be a one off thing where your crew member was unable to demonstrate the duty in front of the ism auditor so that is how i will summarize the audit like i said the whole ship everything comes under the ism audit you have to demonstrate safety in procedures safety in operations as well as protection of the marine environment and that is the best way for me to describe it so i hope this was a short video good enough for your understanding of the ism code and uh, you can use this information to answer questions in the exam as well as practical application at sea let me know what you thought about this video i look forward to your comments bye guys and study hard